you just have to watch this left tackle, Sewell. He just finishes people. That damage on the ground. Let's go, D. Let's go, D. The 74th winner of the Outland Trophy. Give it up for Panay Sewell. As the country's best lineman, the Oregon tackle, he's just a 50 side. pound clean guy that weighs 330 that's got feet. First name Panay, last name Sewell, and I love to play football. Every day. Heading into your sophomore season, you're now returning, you're playing left tackle for the Ducks. What were your expectations for the season? Uh, I really wanted to go to that natty as much as possible. And I wanted it all. I, there was nothing. I just didn't want to leave anything on the table. You won the Allen that year. You won the Morris Trophy, which was voted on by the Pac-12 defense alignment. Uh, you were an All-American. You won the Polynesian College Football Player of the Year Award with, with Tua as well. Is there one award that stands out to you as, as most meaningful? Probably that outland yeah. uh, to be the first Polynesian to ever win that award and to be also be the first Oregon player to win that award it kind of broke me down a little bit thank you for making my dream possible and thank you for having me and my family here today and to be awarded to one of the most prestige awards how is the Samoan culture the Polynesian culture shaped who you are as a football player how did it shape you into being the person you are uh, so the number one thing I kind of learned from my culture is loyalty. So for me, I took that loyalty to a whole other level, loyal, loyal to my teammates, loyal to the game, loyal to my craft, that every time, day in and day out, I was going to be loyal to what I love. And that's, I guess, I picked the football, and I picked and my, the people around me, most definitely, without a doubt. When did you realize that you were going to be um, a great football player? Right when I got to Oregon. Uh, yeah, in high school as a kid, I was just like, yeah, I'm going to just enjoy college, see where it takes me. But then after, after getting that starting role, after just having one fall camp and kind of being there for a short period of time, I was like, OK, this kid, I could, I could make my dream possible. Let's talk about that motivation, that aggression. We're going to watch your film now. So you get out, you don't get out easier because the guy's going to come to you. But I want to talk about your processing here. You're looking inside back to out. When you decide to go to the next level, because this is pretty impressive here to be able to stop. OK, I can't block that guy. I'm going to go attack the second level, the third level, really. Yep. So I knew that the safety was my guy counting for the number three from the from the corner to the, really? yeah, one, two, three. Yep. So uh, I knew he was that far. He was like, he was pretty deep. So I stopped to check if there's any inside threat or if anybody coming yeah. to hit, hit uh, red faster. I checked, didn't see nobody, and went right up and then hit him <laughs> and hit 20 in the mouth. <laughs> Uh, it's like you can't, you're not supposed to be able to stop and start like this. Let's watch it from another angle. Uh, here so we like, go. Yeah, I was really looking for 33, but he kind of shifted in too far. And then, yeah, I checked that and then went, turned and then get off field. Did you have to learn how to hit someone in this explosive way? Because, you know, it, 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 a lot of this comes down to technique. You have to hit with the same foot and same shoulder. You see that, you can see the hip explosion here as well. Do you have to learn? how to finish guys like this. I think it's, it goes back to being on the islands. I was a pretty young dude. I was probably like 10 years old, and I was going against 14, 13 year olds that were like pretty, like pretty big, like twice my size, maybe even three times my size. And so kind of getting blown up, I guess that childhood of playing on the island helped me learn how to hit like that. What are you on the field? I become this person where I'm just trying to uh, really run through somebody. Uh, I guess all that aggression, I don't know, just holding in just comes out and I want to run through everybody and anybody that's going against my goals and what I want to accomplish. What do you love about football? Uh, ever since I grew up, if you told me what's the first thing you remember ever, then it's with football. Uh, my dad's always been around the game, so I've always been uh, grew up around the game, running cone to cone or running with a football or uh, throwing a football, it's whatever. So that love's always been there from the beginning. What do you remember most about growing up in American Samoa? Uh, just waking up, just walking to the beach, or waking up and just playing outside and enjoying what ha what the island had to offer. Why did your dad decide to, to move you guys to the States? Uh, it was for a better opportunity. At the end of the day, the American Samoa didn't have the platform to really put our names on the map or to really get our names out to the colleges that we want to attend and want to go to. So. Uh, making that move, he was just like, yeah, he'll just set you guys up for a better life, for a better opportunity, a better chance to really, uh, I guess, be successful in the dream that you want to do.
What was your reaction when he told you guys we're moving to the States? Oh, man, that was hard. Uh, most definitely hard. I didn't want to move at all. At the time, I was like, man, I'm going to just stay here with Auntie. Like, y'all can go. Like, I'm not going. <laughs> I'm going to stay here. Uh, man, I was so young. And at the time, man, I really had everything. So coming off the island, I was just like, what, what, what is there out there that could offer me more than what I have right now? How, how long did it take you to get used to Utah? Probably like two years. At first, I really kind of just, it was a, a whole different lifestyle and a whole different world. Going to even Hawaii from American Samoa, they had escalators, they had elevators, and I was just just going up the escalator, up and down, up and down, like it's a roller coaster or something. What's the the luxury item that when you got to the States, you, you know, that you were like, wow, this is something that's so simple in the States that we didn't have in Samoa? It was a bedroom and a bed. We, we had a bunk bed for the first time. I was like, what the hell? We got, <laughs> we got two beds stacked on each other? But yeah, it was, a, it was a bed. Where did you sleep in Samoa? Uh, we all slept on the living room floor. So was that dirt floor, blankets, you're on wood? What are you on? So just to give you overall uh, view of my house, it was a shack. Uh, it was one bathroom, one bedroom, one living room, and then the kitchen, obviously. So the bedroom was used for clothes. Like all our clothes just fill up the whole room, and then there's the living room where we have the, uh, like the we have wooden ca uh, couches and wooden stuff. And uh, when it comes for bedtime, we just kind of separate everything, make room for all of our heads to lay. So at the time, it'd be like, it'd be <laughs> head, head, lay. Like it just kind of yeah. be going back and forth, just kind of changing it up too. Uh, not not that big of space, but we kind of made it happen. There's a lot of expectations placed upon you by yourself, by your family, by the Polynesian community. How are you dealing with those expectations? Any expectation, any type of talk, I hear it, but I don't I don't listen. So I just go out there, cross the line, and play the sport I love, and uh, again, do, do my thing. The Pac-12 decides to cancel their season in August. They're heading into 2020 for, for COVID, and you decide to, to opt out. Uh, take me through that decision process. Uh, it was really not that, I guess, uh, complicated. Once the Pac-12 decided to cancel, at first I was like, all right, they're, they're not going to bring it back. Right when that happened, I just decided to opt out and uh, to really work towards something. I didn't really like sitting there and kind of just waiting around, not knowing what was going to happen. So yeah, I opted out, got down here and started training. What have you worked on the most in your time off? Uh, definitely my hand, my techniques with my hands, and uh, just kind of the more knowledge of the game and what different looks that they have out there. And uh, again, for me too, and also is creating that nastiness even when I'm tired. The team that drafts you, what kind of player are they getting? Oh, they're getting a special, unique player. Uh, they're getting somebody that truly understands and loves the game. It's a, again a way of life, not just a game to him. Uh, they're getting a player that can do anything and everything on the field, anything that they ask them, anything like that, and they're getting a leader. This is exactly what he's on his earth to make to do, to b block somebody, to hit them in the mouth. And uh, yeah, when we're, we're on that field, I'm a whole different person. I want to come and I don't want to ruin your day. Like, I want you to hate me at the end of the day on the field. I want you to just uh, just know that I'm here always and that I'm, I'm not going to stop until that whistle at that time hit zero. What are you most looking forward to in the NFL? Playing. Uh, man, I just want to go against the best of the best. Uh, I really want to go against uh, Aaron Donald. I know what he is. He's the greatest of all time. But man, that's what makes it fun about the game. You get to go against the greats. And uh, you get to play against the greats. I love it. So I want to go against the people that I looked up to.